and welcome here to Talk FCB and welcome back to the channel guys and this is not really how we wanted to do it was it this is not how we wanted to be feeling the morning after PSG versus Barca but in these situations what I've found over the years unfortunately I've got good experience of this it's good to talk them out you don't want to keep all of this bottled up here the emotion that we feel we don't want to just switch off from it pretend like we don't care we do care we care very very much and that is why today we're going to be going through the whole game, the aftermath as well, the fallout from it all, and we are going to try and have some positivity, we are going to try and look forward wherever possible, that is really, really important to do, but what we are also going to do today is speak with honesty as well, because we cannot continue to progress here without honesty, we've got to face up to some really important facts, there are certain areas of this team that need looking at desperately, and we're going to be talking about it all today, thank you to all of you for joining me, and let's do this. Because I do today, guys, want to give a special shout out to Jesse. And he's been such a lucky charm for us over the past few weeks. And I was hoping to give him his shout out after a win last night. So I'm really, really sorry that we couldn't make that happen. Huge thank you as well to Ali here, who's finding the positives after last night's defeat. We are building. There is progress. There are things here that we can be excited and hopeful about at Barca. And that is where I do want to begin. Because we are all of us here right now very sad. We are very hurt the morning after. Make no mistake about that. We're frustrated. We're angry. Every negative emotion that you can imagine, we are feeling it right now. And it's going to take some time, obviously. This is not our first time, like I say, experiencing this feeling. We've been here before. But that's one thing that I would stress right away. Personally, I don't feel the same way now as I did after Roma, after Liverpool. At least not directly. I don't think this is exactly the same as those kinds of embarrassments in Europe, those kinds of collapses on the European stage. Because in those games, remember, we voluntarily sat back. We tried to protect the leads that we had. We produced cowardly performances and with 11 men on the field at all times. And we had a whole host of not only world-class players, but highly experienced players at that out there in those games. But last night, we lost in a manner that may destroy us emotionally. That's certainly the same from all those years ago. But it could have been different. And we threatened to make it very different there. 11 versus 11, we were well and truly in this game. We were well and truly on top. We had a real advantage over PSG. And remember... This is not an experienced team. At this level, a lot of the players there haven't experienced these kinds of matches before. We had a 16-year-old and a 17-year-old out there starting for us. And these guys, remember, they've been unbelievable. You see how much it means, especially to the younger players, how much they're desperate to succeed, how much they wanted to get over the line. And believe me, they will succeed here. They are top, top talents that we have to be proud of and that we have to really appreciate. And that is why this feels different for me. Because there is a part of me here that feels that we can have pride in the team. What we've achieved right now. And I'm not saying that we should be proud of reaching a quarterfinal. I don't think anybody at Barca is about to start celebrating quarterfinals of the Champions League. And we shouldn't. But I'm proud of the way that over the past few weeks, they have turned things around. We didn't expect it from this team. We thought this season we would have nothing to celebrate. It looked like we were going nowhere. And we've gone on a bit of a journey. We have had a few weeks here, a few big results, a few special memories here, whereby we can have some elements of pride from what we've done. And if these players have shown one thing over the past few weeks, one thing that we can take away from this whole situation, it's that we have here a very good, very exciting Barcelona team on our hands. And it's what we've always said as fans. It's what we've always known. Because for much of the season, we have drastically underperformed. We we were nowhere near where we should have been. We've got a lot of talent. We have a lot of quality. We've got some incredible young players, like I say. And the level that we've been able to show these past few weeks... That's got to be the standard now. There is no excuse to slip below those standards. We must demand every player to be at that same high level. And let me just say this. We should be in the semi-final. We should actually be in the final four with the way that we looked at the start of the game, with the way that we took the lead, the way that we were 11 versus 11. But in the end, I feel 
We've beaten ourselves. I don't think we've lost here to PSG. We did the damage all by ourselves, And that is why, as much as we can be proud, as much as we can be excited, as much as there are positives that you can take from this situation, to move forward in the Champions League, to reach the latter stages, we've got to be self-critical. We must ask big questions of this team. And that's where we go now. Because first, well, we have to discuss the referee from last night. I've got to talk about him, guys. I'm not going to make it excuses about it here but I think we do need to paint the full picture of this game because honestly the referee made himself the main man he made himself a big part of this fixture and that is something that a referee a good one should never ever do and there was a channel member here from Romania on the channel they could not believe by the way that he was chosen there they're from Romania they've seen him referee locally there and they just could not believe that he was chosen for a game of this magnitude and that's the way that it looked he looked well and true Truly out of his depth. He was trying to gain control of this match by brandishing cards for every single action. He'd lost his head, no doubt about that. And there was real questions as well, by the way here, about the VAR team, about what on earth they were doing. Were they even in attendance last night at this game? Because there are several things that could have been checked and should have been checked on the night. Nothing seemed to happen. Nothing changed, certainly. And nothing even seemed to be looked at on VAR. So that there, curious. And Xavi certainly did not hold back when speaking about the referee's performance. He said there, the referee was really bad. I told him his performance was a disaster. I don't like to talk about referees, but it had a clear impact on the game, on the season. And so we cannot stay silent. He said, we're very upset and angry because the red car was the decisive factor in the match. With 11, we were in a good position playing well and in command. He said it's too much to flash a red card in a game like this. He said it was a completely different game after it, and it's a pity that the work of the whole season was ruined by an unnecessary expulsion. So Chaffee there saying the referee was ultimately a disaster, an absolute horror show. And I thought it was interesting as well what Luis Enrique said in his press conference, and Chaffee was actually asked about this in his. Luis Enrique said there that PSG would have won even without Araujo's red card. He said, I can't prove it but we would have and he also said there that he hopes Xavi will remain as the Barca coach for many years to come and Xavi was asked about both of those quotes from Luis Enrique what do you think Xavi said I say no to both I say no that PSG would have won without the red card and I also say no to me being the coach of Barca for many years to come and Xavi I think right here he just seems to be speaking to me like he's got nothing to lose there talking about the referee and the way that he did I don't think he's worried about UEFA giving him there an extended suspension or a big fine or whatever in his mind he's not really going to be around for it he's not going to be around for the Champions League at Barca next season that's the way here that I really interpret Xavi's words and I would say guys looking at the performance here in this game over the two legs here from Xavi for me it's about the discipline with him and it's a real surprise because as a player he hardly ever got booked as a Barca coach four red cards and 22 yellows since he took over as the coach and when you need to demand discipline from your entire team when you are the one saying look we need focus we need ultimate concentration but then you you're on the bench losing your cool completely losing your head and quite frequently you need to be the example you know Chaffee is not a player anymore he's, he's the one that's supposed to be leading this team and I just think here it's because he's so passionate it's because he cares so much nobody can deny that he wants this group to succeed he wanted Barca to win this game more than anything but it just spills over and I think this is something again that Chaffee doesn't even have experience of you know he's not very experienced at this stage of the Champions League as a coach so maybe even it all got to him as well and that is something Thing that he would need to learn and try and control in a way. And the biggest decision by far and away that Xavi had to make last night was which player is going to be sacrificed after the red card there to Araujo? Who am I going to take off? Who am I going to take away from this team? And obviously he chose Yamal. He did say after the game there that in his mind it was between either Pedri or Yamal, but we decided to keep Pedri on to have more control in the game. Now already I would say there, did we actually have more control? That's one thing that we never really seem to have here. We hardly ever have the ball. For me it was all about counter-attacks. That was the way it was going to be after we lost the man. I think the last thing we wanted to do in this game, I've got to 
I say, lose pace. I think as soon as we took more pace out of the game, we were so, so limited. We were already limited to be down the mat, and to take off then Yamal and sort of leave Lewandowski and Rafinha, that really isolated them. We weren't able to get up the pitch, and even on counters there, we couldn't really threaten PSG to the highest degree. And here's the thing I'd say right now, the most important thing I'd say all about Xavi. Now that our Champions League journey, it's over, it's such a shame, but it has now come to an end. A final decision has got to be made on Xavi's future. We have to make a final decision here on what's going to be happening next season. Because if Xavi, and he still maintains even now, I won't change my mind. I am leaving the club. I am not going to stay. He keeps saying it every day, every week, every game. We have to accept that now. If he still maintains that decision, Laporta and co, no matter what they want... They've got to accept it. They've got to face facts. We have to make decisions here with our head and not our heart. We're midway through April. We are approaching a massive summer for this club. We can't just keep hoping, oh, one day, Xavi's going to change his mind. We've got to start planning. Now the Champions League is done, let's get a final 100% decision from Xavi, which we seem to already have, and then we must move on. We must start looking and really targeting a new coach. However, there were several moments in last night's game where it certainly did get away from us. And we have to now talk about the one that really did change the game. And there's no other way of saying it here. Ronald Araujo, he cost us that match. And like I say, it actually hurts because he is a player that we really resonate with. He is somebody who really represents what Barca is. He has been absolutely incredible for us, but he did cost us the game. There is no other way of saying that because a really good point made here on the Super Thanks. This is the kind of tackle you can make in the 80th minute of the game, not in the opening half an hour. That's the kind of challenge that if there's 10, 15 minutes to go, if we still had a two goal advantage on aggregate and a player is in on goal, then you can think, okay, maybe I'll take the red because then I trust the team to see out the game with 10 men. But that is not a tackle you can make with so much of the game to go, to play with over an hour with 10 men against this PSG team, this PSG attack. And what it reminded me of was the 2006 final there, Barca against Arsenal, whereby it was Arsenal in that game that took the red card. It cost them. They didn't concede the goal early, but they did get an early red card and they were never able to recover. They weren't able to see out the game in the end. Barca made, of course, the comeback and it felt like that. It felt inevitable from that moment that it was done. And I think here, a lot of people are angry, obviously, with Araujo. A lot of people are saying, is he too rash at times? Does he sort of dive in when maybe not needed? Does he sometimes have these hot-headed moments whereby you've got to take more care as a centre-back? You've got to be so, so careful. But what I think we also can't forget with Araujo, as incredible as he is, as brilliant a defender as he is, he is another one of these players who lacks experience at this stage of the Champions League, even despite the fact that he's not a youngster anymore, he's still not played many of these really high-pressured games in the Champions League. And I'm sure he is going to learn a lot from last night. I'm sure it's going to hurt him. I'm really, really sure about that. And I feel sad for him. I feel sad for all of us. But yeah, Rajo there, big mistake at a big time, and it cost us the game. But even after that red card there was still a game to play. Even after that red card, there was still an opportunity for Barca with the players that were left to do the incredible, to do something very special. And we did not do it. And that's why I want to move on to talk here now about Cancelo. Let's start there because he was at fault for PSG's first goal there. He lost Dembele in the build up, wasn't aware of the run. That's the one job that he had. Mark Dembele, mark him at the back post. He loses him. That there is unforgivable. And then of course the penalty, we don't know what he was thinking. We don't know what went through his mind. It was a loss of control. It was a loss of concentration. Again, a rash decision, just like Araujo's, and another decision that really, really cost us. Now, on Cancelo, again, it's a player that I like. It's a player that we've enjoyed throughout the season. Nobody can doubt his quality going forward. He's been brilliant for us. Even if PSG were able to nullify that threat over these two legs, we barely saw Cancelo getting into their half at all. But against the top teams, let me just say this. You've got to find a way to protect him defensively. Because I do not believe you can count on Cancelo, that you can depend and trust him defensively against the best teams. There is a reason in my mind why Pep Guardiola does not trust Cancelo, why he did not want him to be part of his teams. 
because you can't really depend on him. There is a mistake in there. There is a moment of madness coming defensively when you're really put under pressure. And obviously, teams are going to target that. You saw PSG here time and time again. They were going for our left side. They knew that that was a weakness. They knew that was an area that they could get in. And they did. And that is a concern with Cancelo. Looking to the future. Looking at what's going to happen in these future games at this stage of tournaments. How are you going to find a way to protect him? To use his quality goal going forward, but find a way to not make him a liability at the back. And then there's midfield, because by the way, last night's game only reinforces the need for a top quality defensive midfield player. Every single team that you will see competing, contending for the Champions League, they've got a top quality defensive midfielder. You cannot function without one. You cannot be a world-class team without one. You can get by, you can get around it for a certain amount of time, but in the end, in a game like this, when teams threaten you, when they put the pressure on, you need somebody of world-class ability in that area, and we don't have it. Which brings me on to Frankie de Jong. Now, he is under real fire after the game last night from many Barcelona fans. They're unhappy with his performance. They're frustrated with him maybe in big games in general. Frank de Jong does have plenty of critics and certainly his impact or lack of it in yesterday's game from midfield. It was evident and I would just like to say on him as well he is not and he never will be a solution as a defensive minded midfielder. Now many of us going into this game I feel were quite nervous about him in that area with no Christensen. Roberto obviously suspended as well but with no Christensen there was no defensive-minded player there to protect us. And Frankie just doesn't have it. He does not have, for me, any defensive awareness. He will let players run off him. He will let players move in and around him. He's not really able to sense danger in that area. And he doesn't really seem to be able to play there. It's as simple as that. And I think we've got to accept that. You know, for many, many years, it's like, oh, let's try Frankie as the DM. Let's try him as the pivot. Let's maybe try and play him in that area. It can work. It just can't. We've got to accept it now. Many years have gone by. He is an experienced player now. He's had a lot of time to adjust to different positions. And he is not. And he never will be a lone pivot, a defensive-minded midfielder. You can't play him there and get away with it in a big game. And then there's Lewandowski. Then there is Robert Lewandowski, who, let me just say, for the second goal there on Vitinha, close him down. I mean, to look at what he did when he was going in to block that ball, he did not stand up. He did not face it head on. He almost shied away from blocking the shot. That, again, that's unforgivable right there. And I'll say about Lewandowski, he's improved this year. It has been much welcomed by all of us. We would admit that his level has improved improved. He's helped the team, but I would say as well, that doesn't necessarily mean it's enough though. You know, yeah, he's gotten better, but he was at a very, very poor level. He was showing virtually nothing at the start of this season. He's gotten better. He's improved, but does it still mean that it's enough for a Barcelona team? Because I would look at a game like last night, whereby even with 10 men, there were opportunities for us. There were spaces that opened up. PSG were going forward. They were certainly committing players. Rafinha was making runs. He was there trying to take advantage. Ferran did as well when he came on, but... Lewandowski cannot. He can't do it. And he's simply unable to operate in space. He's not that kind of player. And I'll say again, every top club, every Champions League contender, their forwards, they've got some element of pace. Whether they're, it's over a short distance, acceleration, or whether it's over a long distance, they've got that burst of speed that can get you up the field. And also to unlock space in behind. Lewandowski doesn't have that, and he's not going to have that. It's not going to magically come back. He doesn't possess that skill. Because think about all the best Barcelona teams, the pace that we had. Samuel Eto'o, Thierry Henry, David Villa at his best, Luis Suarez at his best. You think about any situation, they could hurt you. Whether they had space, whether they didn't. They were able to be effective in every situation. That's what a Barca centre-forward needs to do. And I think Suarez, by the way, great example. Because towards the end of his time at Barca, even as good as he still was, even the fact that he could still score goals, it didn't change the fact that in the biggest of games, in the biggest of moments, when these games opened up, he was limited in his play. He was very limited and he became a liability in that. And I think we're reaching that point now with Lewandowski. I don't doubt that he can still score goals, that he can still be effective in certain areas of the field, but when you're trying to win a Champions League, I think you need more. I think from your number nine right now, he's 35 years old, he turns 36 in the summer, Barca 
have to be looking beyond him. You know, you can't just place everything on a player that's going to turn 36 this summer. This is not the way that you do things at a top club. It's sad, but it's true. We're reaching that point. And again, we've got to face facts. We signed Vitor Roque for a reason. And this is one thing that I can't get my head around this season. We brought him in early. And you think now, this is the time to use him. These are the moments now. The rest of this season, let's give the boy a chance. Let's give him the opportunity to step up. Maybe to learn a few things here. Why did we sign him? If we're not going to bother with that, we need to look forward. We need to look now at the next step, the evolution of this team, the progress that we've got to make. And I would say as well, guys, big game on Sunday. Real Madrid, the Classico, the opportunity to bounce back. A chance here to restore some pride. If only that. It's a big game and we're going to be thrown into it immediately, which might actually be a good thing for all of us to be thrust back into a big match, a big moment where we must still compete. So please, guys. Do let me know your thoughts. And honestly, it is a tough day. It is a tough feeling right now. I really didn't want this to happen. I really didn't want to be sitting here today feeling glum. I wanted to be going crazy. I wanted to be celebrating like crazy. But that will come. We can get there. I believe that we can. I believe that we are taking steps. Even if they're small, even if there's going to be bumps in the road, we're getting there piece by piece. We will get there in the end. We've got to believe that. It's all we've got. We've got to believe it. So please, guys, let me know your thoughts down below. Let me know how you're feeling today. I hope you're feeling okay. I hope you can try and find a way to see some positive, some light here at the end of the tunnel. And I'll be here with you guys. Make no mistake about that. Thank you here for sticking by on the channel, for tuning in, making it all the way to the end. I really, really appreciate that. But until next time, guys, let's stand tall and say, Vizca. Yeah, Barca. Uh...